just so people are aware that we're starting recording this. So anyone on the call knows, um, you know, if you have questions, obviously you can ask them, um, but just the, the session will be recorded. And how's the weather uh, where you are? It's, yeah, it's beautiful oh. today. Yeah. We're spoiled. There's some blue skies here at the moment. That's a nice change. Yeah, yeah. Should we start or do, yeah. would you want to wait? Yeah, for... yeah, you might as well. Yeah. OK, great. So let's I'm just going to introduce myself and my other colleague, Anya. So I'm Rory Mulcairns. I'm the, the head of the Nature Masterclasses on demand platform. Um, it's me and my team that work closely with universities to help set up access, but then also support. And also my colleague, Ganya. Um, Anya, would like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, thank you, Rory. Hi, everyone. My name is Anya, and I look after the onboarding of the new clients, as well as supporting them with the engagement and promotion. Perfect. And in this session today, um, we've we've booked an hour and, and usually the format would be a between 30, 30 to 45 minute presentation from myself. And I'll go over some just background um, information behind the platform, um, outline the courses that you have access to, as well as then walk through the access startup method for you. So how you gain access to the platform. And then I'll break out the PowerPoint presentation and go through a live demonstration of a couple of our courses so you can see how to navigate the courses and get familiar with it after this session. Um, and then we'll open up the floor to a Q&A. So uh, at any time you can post questions in the chat and then we can um, we can cover them after the presentation. Great. So I'm just going to start now. So in theory and in, in, in short, the Masterclasses online platform is a professional development platform for researchers, uh, both early career and um, mid to senior career researchers. And it um, draws upon the expertise of our Nature Journal editors, but also a group of experts that we've worked with to co-design the courses. Um, giving researchers access to content that's suitable for them um, in their research cycle. These are some of the presenters and experts that we work with, so we're really proud to have a whole host of different internal and external um, trainers that have contributed to the courses. These include the chief editor of Nature, Magdalena Skipper, who, who is the, the most senior editor within the Springer Nature family. Um, but we also have professors, academics, um, industry leaders and funders all coming together to support the content. It provides you, the, the end user, with a nice mix of different expertise and insights into this training content. And we want to we usually kick off these sorts of sessions with a bit of rationale. You know, why does nature or Springer Nature um, produce training content? Because we are a scientific publisher, we're not a training organization, but we have been running training workshops and sessions for roughly 12 to 13 years where we would send nature editors to give short lectures on how to write high quality manuscripts or navigate the publishing process. But we saw that there was a greater need for more in-depth training support for researchers at different stages of their research cycle. And this slide outlines some survey data that we've been collecting over the last two years on where researchers struggle with certain stages of their cycle um, and what's also important to them as a professional researcher. And this is just some of the data that we've collected over the last two years from a sample size of around 800 uh, participants of where the research will struggle with and and what's important to them. So you can see that it's it's clear that there is a continued need for development and support for researchers at different stages of this research cycle from from ideation all the way to dissemination to career building. Um, we 
understand the pain points of researchers and we use this data to inform our publishing team of where we want to explore and expand our training portfolio and to make sure that the courses that we offer are relevant and that will be useful for, for researchers. And this is the full catalogue of courses that you have access to. So at the moment we have 14 individual training courses available on the Masterclasses platform. And you can see um, each course we've grouped into a part of the research cycle. So if you're at the experiments analysis stage, you have four courses that are relevant for you. If you're about to publish or you are um, disseminating your paper, your research to a wider audience, we have three courses available to you. So there's something for everyone, um, depending on where you are at your research cycle. And because this is a fully on demand training platform, you can choose which course you want to take. You can also choose which part of which course you want to take. So you have complete freedom to navigate the courses, look at the modules and lessons and pick the content that's best suited for your needs. The courses circled in red are our new 2023 courses. So um, we've just published getting an academic research position. So that's the first course that focus on on career progression and career movement or applying for for positions. We've worked with a mix of experts with that course. Internally, we have Nature Careers and that's our the world's largest scientific job board where we have the managing editor of that content supporting on this. We also have the head of the professional development, uh, continued professional development at Springer Nature. Um, and then we have outside experts that are career support and, um, and work a lot with CV writing and um, interview tactics and skills. So it's a really fantastic course that uses both internal and external expertise. And then we have three additional courses to be released throughout this year. So um, scientific writing revamp, uh, publishing in an ethical way and communicating to the general public. And these will be launched every quarter with a alert system going out to all registered users. So we would recommend that you, you keep your um, marketing alerts open because this is where you will learn when new courses have been published on the platform. So what I'm going to do is just walk through these courses in a little bit more detail with you. I won't spend too much time on this because we do feel like um, natural curiosity is good. It's, it's nice to see it for you to go into the platform and to see yourself which courses are best suitable for you. But I'll walk through each course in a little bit more detail. So the first two are focusing on writing or the publishing phases of, um, of the research cycle. So scientific writing and publishing a focus on peer review are two two courses that speak for themselves. Um, scientific writing and publishing is actually three miniature courses within one giant course. Um, you can see here we've had over 36 editors from from pretty much all of the nature branded journals that have contributed to this course. So it's split into three parts. Part one is writing a research paper. Part two is uh, publishing a research paper and part three is writing a review paper. This course is our original first course that we've published and it's the reason why we're revamping part one. So there will be a new version of writing a research paper being launched later this year which will update uh, the first part of this course, add more content to it actually, uh, it will make it larger and it will yeah change the format to some of our newer newer courses. And then focus on peer review is a pretty is a slightly smaller course than than scientific writing and publishing. It supports researchers that are new to the peer review process, but also um, established reviewers to maybe streamline your processes and make things that little bit easier for you when you're asked to review someone's research. Then we have two courses that are based around uh, research collaborations and networking. So building your networks as a researcher. Um, that networking for research is a is a three to four hour learning course um, split into bite sized lessons where we have experts from um, uh, from the research communities as well as communication experts and and uh, networking consultants. So helping you network both digitally and in person to build those hopeful future collaborations and. Then effective collaboration and research 
again, it's it's a large course, this one, eight hours of, of learning time where we will walk through starting a collaborative research project, uh, being part of one, being an effective um, collaborator and then managing or start or leading a collaborative research project. So this looks at ways to streamline approaches to working with researchers in different countries or from different disciplines. So it's a really valuable course if you are starting to um, yeah, join these inter interdisciplinary research projects. We now move on to the data focus courses. So this we have four courses that are that fit into the category of data analysis. Um, the first one is managing research, research data. Um, so this really understand like sets the scene for um, uh, maintaining or creating a data management plan and then evaluating how to share that data. Um, as we then move in interpreting scientific results, so I guess this would be kind of in, in hand with managing that data. This is a course that uh, looks at um, the steps that you need to take to an analyze your, your data, interpret it and make sure that you're not falling through common pitfalls that have happened to researchers when you know misinterpreting their, their data. There's lots of references and real life examples of how things might have gone wrong for some researchers. So it's a really valuable course for, for you to look at. And then we have two data analysis focus courses. So planning, preparing and conducting and troubleshooting. So these are obviously a large area data analysis and we split this into two. So if you're already and analyzing or um, troubleshooting your data, you can go straight to the course that best suits your needs. Then we move on to the, the um, category of courses that look at communication. So uh, narrative tools for researchers is a science communication focus course that looks at um, using storytelling in your um, communication projects. So how narrative tools can help you communicate your research clearer um, to peers and to stakeholders. Um, and advancing your scientific presentations is a very practical course that um, focuses on yeah, building an, an engaging slide deck or an engaging presentation for your research, but also um, uh, re, um, scientific talks as well. Then we have two courses that are focus on grant funding or funding the funding um, stage of your research cycle. So we have finding funding opportunities. So this is one of our newest courses and it, it includes researchers, funders and editors that have a vast experience with managing funding. Um, it looks to to prepare you for finding that funding um, bodies. So finding the the best suited organizations for your research, um, analyzing your funding requirements and also strategies to keep track of suitable funding opportunities. And then persuasive grant writing. So this is one of our most popular courses where we take the elements of um, a narrative tools to focus it specifically for grant applications. So how can you write a more compelling, engaging and persuasive grant application? And in this course we have um, editors that have managed large grants. We have funding agencies and bodies. So real examples from researchers of how to engage the um, funding bodies and make sure that you're um, communicating the impact and uh, yeah, the impact and reach of your research properly for a, a grant application. Now this course doesn't, our, our courses don't specifically focus on the requirements for particular grants or particular funders like UKRI or Horizon um, uh, Europe, but we do have some examples from different funding agencies, but this these skill sets can be applied to, to all grant applications. Um, it's very transferable. Then we have our two newest courses. So experience from idea to design. This is the yeah, at the beginning of the research cycle. So the methodology and um, design phase. So it's a big course, eight, seven to eight hours out long. And we've got a mixture of experts, including researchers that have a lot of experience in different research projects and, and nature journal editors as well with the same scientific background. 
And then getting an academic research position, as I highlighted earlier at the beginning of this session, this is our brand new course. It has experts from our nature careers teams, as well as our continuing professional development team. Um, and then we also have careers experts from different high profile institutions and, and coaching staff. So it's a really nice mix for. Um, sorry, there's someone just tried to join. I'm going to admin them. Um, for people not just at the beginning of their careers, but if you're a senior researcher looking for a new position or a new challenge, then this is something that you could also look into. OK, so I'm moving on to step two of this session, so how to access the courses. Now, all of this will be provided to you afterwards as well, but I want to walk through how to access. So you've seen what is available to you. There's a huge amount of content here. Now, how do you get access? Now, Everything that we I'll, I will walk through now is specifically tailored for your access methods. So everything here you can reference back to. But just to reiterate, you get access to all of the training courses on this platform. You don't need to have set, separate subscriptions to any other courses, including the new ones that we release. So everything is included. Logging on for the first time. Now, this may seem quite self-explanatory, but it's good to walk through these things. When going on to the Masterclasses platform, you need to register. So we need to know who you are, basically, to make sure that you are choosing the right institution and you're getting access the right way. So you need to register. And on the top right-hand corner of the platform, you can see a key which says register. So select that registration tab. It will bring you to our registration page. This is where you choose your specific institution, which then tailors your registration process to make sure that it's using the right access method, which is really important to make sure that you get access to the content. So when choosing your institution, please choose the right institution. Um, so when, as soon as you start typing Queens, it will come up automatically. It will self-populate and choose Queen's University Belfast as your institution. And then you can put in your email address, your name, your last name, your job title and your discipline. Now this information, first of all, we don't share personal information unless a data transfer agreement is, is signed. Um, but we do track the number of courses and the general job position and discipline of the users on the platform. It means that the university can see the value that they're getting from their license. So once you've chosen QUB, you'll ask you to populate the, the red asterisk um, fields. Once you've done all of this and you've ticked to the privacy policy, you can register. And once you register, this will send an email to your. Oh, sorry, one step. As soon as you click register, it will take you to your network ID. So this is where you put in your single sign on details for QB, which is what you access a lot of your other systems or resources. So this is the unique access method for the university's single sign on. Once you've done this. It will be the final step, which is um sending or confirming that you are who you are through your email address so you'll get a confirmation email through the addre email address that you've provided and this is what you need to then confirm that you've put in the right contact details there's the verify your email um, example here Sometimes this can go into junk email addresses, so just be sure to, to check. It's usually instant, so as soon as you register and it sends it, it will either go into your, your inbox or directly into your junk, so just double check those. But this needs to be done to verify your account. Once you've confirmed, you, can, you will be redirected to the platform site and then your registration is complete. So you don't have to do that any other times, only once into the platform. As soon as you go back into the platform, it will log you in. So instead of registering the next time, just log in. You will need to select your institution when you log in and then you'll be given access. So there's, yeah, there's a couple of steps that you need to take, but we're here at hand if there's any issues for you getting access to the platform. Again, these will be shared with you, so you can reference back to these slides. Now I'm going to come back to, come out of this 
presentation because we have a block of slides here which are about using the course, but I want to show you. It. So I'd rather demonstrate these slides, um, these actions rather than just go through a PowerPoint. So I'm going to come out of here and try and find. Bear me one second. Here we go. Just bear with me one second, it's quite hard to navigate. Um, can you see this? Yes, yes. yeah. Excellent. OK, so this is the home page of the Masterclasses platform. Now, what I'm going to do is demonstrate two courses for you so you can see the format of what to expect when working through the modules and lessons but also show you some other features of the platform and the first thing i'd like to highlight is that i'm logged in so you can see that it says my page instead of log in and it says log out instead of register so that means that i'm logged into the platform and now i'm on the home page and the home page is really designed to help you find content that might be useful for you and give you some information about the platform so the first thing i'd like to highlight that this yellow bar here is that we have a quiz that you can take which recommends a course for you based on the information that you give the quiz. So based on your career stage or your research cycle stage or your particular need, you can complete this quiz and it will recommend courses that are relevant for you. So I definitely encourage you to go through that. It only takes a few minutes and it will um, recommend our top courses. But you can also see some of the new and popular courses if you scroll through this home page. So you can see a getting an academic research position is our newest course. Scientific writing, publishing and the space of grant writing is some of our most popular courses. So this will update on a quarterly basis with the new new course content. And then we can also scroll through here and see all of the courses available on the platform. So if you want to go through the home page and access courses, you can. You just need to click on the course title and it will take you to that course landing page. Or you can go to the top left hand corner and click on the menu drop down. So this menu drop down gives you all of the listed courses available for you to access, but also a little bit more about the training events and workshops that we do, which is an additional um, training solution and then information about the platform. So who we are who are experts that we've worked with, the blog, which includes articles about new courses that we're releasing, and then some case studies from other users or institutions that we've worked with. Then we have our support page. So this is where you can see an, an accessibility statement help. So if you're having any technical issues, you can go through our online customer services division, which will support you with any technical problems and then any additional services or promotional materials that you may need um, whilst using the platform. So the easiest way, in my opinion, to, to find the course that you want to take is go on back onto this menu. So I'm going to choose um, advancing your scientific presentations. And then it takes me to the course homepage. So every single course has its own homepage. This is where you can see the audience that is designed for the key features and skills that you'll be learning in this particular course. So for this course, it's a four module course with the certificate at the end of those four modules. We have 10 experts that have contributed to this course, and that includes the chief editor of Nature, the Magdalena Skipper, also um, experienced researchers and presentation designers and trainers. So it's a really nice mix of experts that have contributed to this particular course. It's seven to eight hours long and those lessons are roughly 15 minutes long. So there are bite sized lessons for you to take. You don't need to sit for eight hours at, at a time if you don't want to. And the skills that you'll be learning is is about techniques um, that 
uh, that, that, that can help overcome the challenges that you might experience when delivering presentations and then how to use storytelling to as the foundation of your presentations and then actually creating a professional slide deck that can communicate your findings. So you can see if I scroll down through the course homepage, you can see the modules that have built this course. So it's four modules overcoming research challenges, research presentation challenges, developing the story behind your talk, building an engaging slide deck and preparing and navigating your talk. We then have some insights to some of the experts that we worked with. So you can see here um, that's Magdalena Skipper, the chief editor of Nature, but we also have a Michael White, the one of the senior editors of Nature. We have um, Michael Ailey, so the teaching professor from Penn State University, Nolan Hames, the principal of Nolan Hames Creative, which is a communications organization. So a really nice mix of experts. And then we have uh, real life professors and, and um, researchers from different institutions giving their input. So I'm going to start this course. It will take me to a different web page. So this is the landing page for the module. So adv advancing your scientific presentations, you'll be able to see, sorry, for the course, you'll be able to see all four modules here, the lessons involved and the time taken for each um, module. You can also see here that I've completed this course. I have 100% completion rate, which means I've gone through every uh, module and I have a certificate that I can download here. So I'm going to show you this certificate first before going through the course. Um, can you see this? I'm just conscious that it might have taken me for, to a different place. Yes. Yeah. Great. Great. So you can see that I completed this course today. Um, and it is advancing your scientific presentations and then it's stamped and signed by Magdalena Skipper, the chief editor of Nature. So there is a certificate available for every course on the platform, so you can find them on the course homepages like this, but you can also find them on your dashboard. So if I want to start this course from the beginning, overcoming your research presentation challenges, I can click into the module and it takes me now to the module um learning page so it actually starts from where i finish which is at the end of the module so if i just use this left hand navigation bar which walks through the lessons you can see that i've completed all of the lessons within this module but i want to start it again so if i take the first one it's the welcome to the course now the left hand side is the navigation and the main body of the content is right in front of you here so all of our lessons all of our courses are made up of text-based learning so examples quizzes polls multiple choice questions and then talking head videos from our experts so they will be addressing a question or a problem that the lesson is focusing on so you can see here that it's first of all teeing up how much experience that i've got so if I say that I find communicating my research to the academic community um, challenging, I'm going to vote this. And then it tells me real time what other people have, what other issues or challenges other users are doing. So all of this data is real time usage data. So you can see that uh, most people feel underprepared or nervous when giving talks to the academic community or um, they find that communicating their research is challenging um, and but some of them feel genuinely confident so this interesting mix of uh, expertise or or different perspectives and then you can see this is the module breakdown of this course and then what to expect so this is one of our first talking head videos so before i start this video you'll be able to see that we have a video transcript below so for people where English isn't the first their native language and they may want to translate something or follow it in this format makes it a little bit more accessible. We also have English subtitles for every single video on the platform. Now I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear this, but we can try.
Uh, Rory, we can't hear the video, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll turn the subtitles on so you can just see. Yeah, I know in, in some different um, sharing platforms like Teams and Google Meet, you can hear it, but there is sound, I can hear it. So, But if um, you need to follow, then there is English subtitles available. But you can see that this expert's just talking through the fundamentals of when he's preparing for talks. So I'm going to pause that there because um, it, it, it you get the the idea about how these videos are designed. So this is a four minute, 37 video. So less than five minutes um, makes it really easy for you to follow and then move through the platform, move through the courses. So you can see here that again, this is another poll. What, what makes a talk resonate with you? So scientific content is strong. I come away from the talk feeling motivated. The speaker engages with the audience. It teaches me something interesting and new. So you can choose these and vote. And you'll get real time examples again. So this is a welcome to the course lesson. This is quite typical for one of our first lessons in a, in a module. It tees up the rationale behind why it's important um what if challenges or issues other people have when no um when doing scientific presentations and then what to expect throughout this module so you can see these are all clickable there's lots of things that you can interact with and then we have a portfolio document so this is a portfolio document made specifically for this module so this is again is a downloadable document that you can use alongside going through this course. So something you can make notes on or print or download and um, um, yeah, just basically use as a second reference point when learning when going through the platform. See some of our other experts there and then you can move naturally at the bottom here. It says lesson two, so you can move there through lesson one to lesson two or you can choose which other lesson that you want to take. So if I want to move through lesson two, it automatically moves me through to the second lesson. So I'm going to just scroll through this so you can see the format. So again, another opportunity to vote and get ideas about other people's um, challenges. And then a true or false question. And then one of our talking head videos. So portfolio activity for this. So I'll just download this and show you an example of one of the portfolio activities. So you can see the, the course is advanced in your scientific presentations. The module is overcoming research presentation challenges, and this lesson is identifying the benefits of giving effective presentations. So an area for you to just make a few little notes. So I'm going to come out of this course and just demonstrate another, but the format is exactly the same for all of our courses. So as soon as you start navigating one and then you're curious about another, it's displayed in exactly the same way. So if I go back to course progress page, it will take me back to that main page. And this is where I can go into a different module if I'm interested in, in say, building the slide deck or preparing for my talk. Or I can go into a new course. So if I wanted to go into, um, for instance, Persuasive grant writing, which is a very popular course. It takes me to the landing page, the home page for that particular course. So if I wanted to start, it will be displayed in the same way. So this is the landing page for the course. It will be where my certificate would be, but I haven't completed the modules here. So you can see that it's um, it hasn't automatically given me my certificate. And then I can choose the module that I want to take. So if I want to take creating the narrative within my grant application. 
you can see it's t it's taken me to where I where I left off, where I left the progress for this particular module. So you can see create a narrative structure within your sections. So walk through this course, this lesson, and another one of our talking head videos, which has a variety of different experts. One that I like to point out is Mr. Gorsuch. So Peter Gorsuch was a senior editor at Nature and then now is the uh, editor in chief of the Nature Editing Services. So he his full time job is to edit manuscripts and grants. So he is the perfect person to train on um, grant editing or creating a compelling and persuasive piece of writing. If I move through here, you can see it's, it's the same sort of format in all of our courses. So a mix of interaction, videos and tasks for the user to complete. This is a, this is a click drag. It's obviously, there we go. <laughs> You can see on the left hand side here, it's now it's slowly populating this lesson whilst I'm working through it. You can also see on the top here, there's a small red bar which which uh, populates as I'm moving through the platform. So you can see the depth of content available just within this one lesson. It's a huge amount of training. There's a huge amount of support available within this. So we do really um, recommend that you do navigate and look into the lessons, the modules and the lessons to see what's best suited for your needs. We've got a checklist here. So this is a checklist that you should be using when going through your grant application. You can reference back to the platform. Another portfolio activity. So every single module and lesson will have a portfolio activity that you can use to reference and um, and work through whilst you're learning on the site. So yeah, you can see that it, it's moving through the lessons quite nicely um, and every course again is displayed in the same way. So you have full access to all of the courses available here. I'm hoping that that short demonstration gave you an insight to the format um, on how our courses are navigated and delivered. So I'm just going to outline some of the other features of the platform. So <clears throat> I've, I mentioned a blog earlier, so you can see here these are articles around some of the topics and courses that we've produced. So you can see here, um, this is a an article around support and skills for challenging research for a challenging research stage. So a little bit more further reading for you if you're curious to see what's what's um, being produced or what we've published in the blog page, and then the support. So we have a help section. If you have any technical support, we have a FAQ and a contact page so if i just move on to that you can see that they have access problems troubleshooting and technical and then the last thing i want to highlight is the profile so if, I, if you click on my page when you're logged in you have your profile which has your login details so if you want to change or edit any of that you can there then you have your dashboard and this is where this lists all of the courses and your progress on each course um, it also is a, a space where we store all of your certificates so you can see and re-access all certificates that 
you've um, been able to redeem. So you can see here, these are all of the courses on the platform um, and then the, my progress on each. And you see the courses that I've completed and then the certificates that I can download. So these will always be available to you to have access to. OK. Right, I'm going to just go out of this now and try quickly to. Move back to my slides. OK, so uh, as I highlighted earlier, we, we have slides for all of the main navigation points that I've just outlined, so I'm going to just quickly go through these um, just to make sure that we've hit everything, uh, going through the course home pages, ways to access the course, logical pro progression from start to finish, or you, um, use the modules to relate to where you are currently in your research life cycle. So, you can dip in and out or you can start from start to finish. The left hand side is the navigation bar that shows progression and the main body is on the right hand side. We have subtitles, we have transcripts. Your profile allows you to change your login details, but your dashboard also allows you to access uh, certificates and to see course progress on a very sim simple um, visual. Right. Additional features. Oh, sorry, just absent, absent, do muted myself. Um, so the blog area I've highlighted is an area of space where we produce articles that are useful and supportive for users on the platform. We have an experts page, so the meet at the experts page just gives, a, you know, the bios of some of the experts that we've worked with. And then the FAQ page allows you to have any support if you need it. So that's the end of the presentation and the session. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it and this has been useful. We just would really encourage you to create an account and start accessing courses if you're curious to see what's available to you. Um, there, there are con there is content suitable for every step of your research cycle. So hopefully there's something suitable for you. This is the opportunity where you can ask us any questions, so I'm just going to stop sharing so I can see again. And um, what, what did we have any questions during the session? No, there's no, no questions in the chat at the at the, the moment, Rory. Thanks, thanks very much. Uh, anyone, any questions they would like to ask at this stage? No, nothing. Um, I suppose one for me, Rory. What what would you say is the is proving to be the most popular course? Yeah, so it is scientific writing and publishing. It's it's the most popular. I think people they see nature and they just they go straight to there. Yeah. It's obviously a very important part, and it is a it's a fantastic course. It's extremely in depth. So. Um, like I said, it's split into three miniature courses, so it, it has writing research paper, so support at every single stage of that uh, of your paper and then publishing a research paper, which I think is probably the most unique because we it's the actual editors giving support on how to navigate, you know, from the perspective of, of nature. It's not specifically for nature, so it's one of the questions we, that we get. Is it, oh, is it just publishing in the nature journals? No, but it is their, you know, their um, perspective and some of their experiences, which you can use for any other high, high impact or high quality journal. Yeah, and, and that's where we started uh, the engagement with yourselves and and, and, and uh, have that module available. And just to say, you know, there is a real wealth of um, knowledge, experience in there now. I think it was gone, is it 15 courses now? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so there's a real wealth uh, and really would encourage people to, to delve in uh, and, and have a look. And I know there's, and, and thanks for people coming along today, but please do talk to your colleagues, 
if for students now th this is available for anyone any researchers in the university so whether you're a phd student a postdoc an academic a professor whatever you everyone can access uh, this fantastic resource and please do delve in yourself but also encourage you to uh, let your colleagues uh, and students and so on know about it as well yeah, and just one thing, I'd I'd say my favorite course on the platform, like we always have favorites, even though we love them all, like you always have your favorite, uh, is probably um, scientific presentations because it's so applicable, um, even for someone that you know isn't a scientist, you can use a lot of the skills sets from that. Um, so yeah, you they they they're all very suitable for whatever wherever you are in your research cycle. And like you said, Paul, it's open. So if you're a PI and you're you you want to just maybe look at one or two lessons, you can. You don't have to take full courses. So yeah. it's completely on demand and accessible to anyone. Brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. Um so Unless there's any other questions or any other comments, I suppose we're sort of can conclude the session. I'll, I'll turn off the recording anyway. The, uh, it looks, yeah, I think uh, we've just had lots of uh, positive uh, messages, so it looks great. And um, yeah, and you know, keep your eyes peeled for new courses. I think that's one thing to mention. We have three new releases this year as well, so. Um, we we have an email system where when we publish a new course, all all registered users will be alerted that this course is available. But we will also share co content with you, Paul, to to distribute. So yeah, yeah. we'll get the information out there. Uh, some some of my colleagues are very good at the minute at um, some uh, great platform, whether it's Yammer or Twitter or whatever uh, platform. <laughs> yeah. The information is, is is increasingly getting out there more and more. Perfect. Great.